excited for today's podcast episode. I have a business owner who knows her way around events, pouring perfection into each and every one event she does. Her name is Barbara Bruna. So Barbara, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it was such a good time at the Grafton event and I loved meeting you. You stuck with me. So I'm so excited that we're able to, you know, do, do something. This. And yeah. And I'm so going. excited. She's going to be sharing so much, but also the fact that her energy is everything. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you. you have to know her energy is everything. So Barbara, tell people a little bit about who you are. Like, who's Barbara? Like, what's the name of your business? Give them a little insight because they don't know that yet. <laughs> okay. So my name is Barbara. i um, been in, in the industry for 18, 17, 18 years now. Um, started very young. Um, I started the company Bar Barbie six years ago. Um, we are a full service, high luxury beverage catering company. So we do all fresh juices. Um, everything is made in house. Nothing is bought in store. It's kind of something that we're known for. Um, we acquired our liquor license a couple years ago and that opened a whole new door for us. So yeah, we've um, been able to reach corporate event planners and celebrity planners, and that's kind of where we're at now. And um, yeah, I've been in the industry for a long time. Bar and drinks and craft food and cocktails were always um, my thing. I love going to different restaurants and trying different things. So um, I was like, I, I didn't see any small companies or any catering companies really catering to that. It was all just basic drinks. And you know, I was like, hey, why not? Let's see where it goes. And here we are today. And so, so basically saw a need in the market yeah. and you were just like, I need to fulfill that. So how did that idea come up? But I guess before Bar Barbies was born, who is Barbara? Like how, like, because how did you know you wanted to get into events and everything? Like what, what was it? What struck you about entering into this crazy, beautiful world that is the event industry? Yes. Yeah, so I've been in the industry for a very long time since I was very young. Um, we grew up in the restaurant business and the restaurant life. Um, my father was in it. Um, we had really close family friends that um, owned a restaurant. So we had been a part of it since very young. And I always saw like it was, I was getting used to the hustle and bustle of it. And I liked it. I always liked it. Uh, as I started getting older and working in the industry and being, you know, working at five our restaurants on Palm Beach. I worked there for about six years. And that kind of opened my eyes as to how far you can go in the event world, as in um, the luxury point, how much you can do. It's very creative in a yeah. sense. And it hit my creative. And I was like, I don't want to be just standing behind this bar anymore. And I just kind of went with that feeling. I made a professional bartender card and went from there. So I just, I just always liked the creativeness side of it and that you're able to create drinks and mix recipes and kind of show, show that off in ways that regular, you know, restaurants don't do. Um, so that's kind of where I, I just wanted to like keep going with it and yeah, see where so it went. Basically you wanted to bring alive that experience because it's not, I think honestly, when you think about an event, decor plays a part, but food and beverage is like the golden ticket to mm -hmm. an event. It's what makes it lively. So you bring an experience and you craft like perfection. That's why I'm like pouring perfection into events. It's like yeah, I really the like perfect that. title uh, because I feel like all your drinks, uh, like you said, we met at the event and everything is presentation. Like everything is like it has a cute name and it looks so pretty. Like it's an Instagram perfect pic. Yes moment. Yes, that's what we aim for. <laughs> um, being, like I said, working at these five-star restaurants in Palm Beach and everything, that's where I saw that. And I wouldn't, you wouldn't get that anywhere else. There was no way to bring that home or, you know, have just a bartender come and do that. So that was my whole drive as to like, I need to be able to bring this to smaller events or, you know, private events. And yeah, that's, that's where, that's what I do. So we do. And it's amazing. Thank you. So I guess, to anyone who's like maybe like thinking about a business, right? Like going into a business, it's like scary, right? So what yes. were some of the things that you were thinking about at the beginning when you were starting your business or you're like, I want to start a business, but where do I start now? Like, tell me what were your thoughts in that moment when you were going through that? So yes, very scary. You're <laughs> sitting there like, what is this going to work? First of all, like, am I going to be able to, you know, leave a full-time job in order to kind of follow your dream and do everything that you need to do and like focus solely completely on your business, which is very difficult because you have to either 
for me, it's either go all the way or not at all. And it's um, scary. It's a big risk. It's very risky, but it's worth it in the end. Um, if you keep it consistent and you keep it going and you follow your dream, even though there's those times where it's like, I don't know, this might not even be working, you know, uh, I don't even know if I'm making money, you know, well, that's and, honest. That's like the, the true thing about being an, like a, you know, yeah. a business owner, like you're like, it's like almost like a gamble at times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you really don't know if it's going to work at the end of the day. Um, and you just take that risk and, you know, I've never been a business owner. I never been, uh, you know, in business or had my own business. So coming from the industry and working as a server bartender, you know, you're kind of like the tech and you know how to do all the technical stuff and everything that comes with making these drinks and the events and everything. But how about numbers and everything else that comes with the business? And that's kind of what was very scary and hard to take on. But, you know, finding a coach, the right business coach to kind of lead you in that way. And, um, that changed the game for me and it helped me a lot. But until I found that I was two years in and I was about to just, I can't do this. I'm not making money. You know, I don't, I'm, you know, my prices aren't the right, what they need to be. I was going to say like, what was the, the biggest thing that you felt like was challenging? Was it finding what to charge mm -hmm. or undercharging or mm -hmm. over giving and not charging enough? Like what were some of the challenges? Yeah, there? that was the big one. That was a very big one, which was um, not knowing the value, like your value, what you're providing, the services and the and how much value is behind it. And um, learning that as like I said, two years in, I was completely lost. I was looking at numbers and I was like, I'm just doing this as a hobby at this point because there's no money coming yeah. in, you know, um, as far as like, you know, profitable. But that's good though that you were just like, you did like a self-check analysis, which it, I think a lot of people just go to the business, just like run and pedal. But it's good that you have those checkpoints where you're just like, okay, what am I making? Like, let me reevaluate. Like, mm -hmm. what's my next vision or goal plan with this? Yes. And I met this coach and I was searching because I was like, I need some sort of answers. I'm like an accountant for the, yeah. for the financial side of it because the technical side and running a weren't running the creativity. An event. It's there. there. Check. <laughs> yeah, it's just the other side of the business. And um, once I got kind of guidance in that in that side of it, it was like, okay, it's game. I just need to do as I'm told and you know follow through and everything will be okay um, because there there's so many clients out there and there's so many different um like levels of clients if that makes sense where you just have to funnel and see which one you want which is a big thing i was going to ask you is as you were like kind of looking at the demographics of like who your like target market would mm -hmm. be especially you're in the palm beach area and you cater even to south florida mm -hmm. like how did like navigating that like how like doing the research but how did you find and say like no i want i want to do luxury like i know i want luxury this is what i want like yeah because at the beginning or, you know, starting a business, you're like, listen, $500 is better than nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I'll be completely honest. One of my first events, it was $250. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm doing it. This is, <laughs> I, this is, you know, we got this. But, you know, after time goes by, you're like, oh, no. But that's a big part that made me decide like, hey, what, who are you wanting to serve? Is it, you know, do you want to be budget? which unfortunately, I mean, there is budget clients and which is fine. You know, there's, there's a company for everybody. Do you want budget? Do you want to deal with, you know, um, mid range? Yeah. Or do you want to go full luxury corporate where there's no questions asked? It's more like, can you make this happen for me? Yes. No. Awesome. You know, let's go or, you know, and I decided really quickly, I was in the Palm Beach industry for a long time. And I saw that level of client and I've been around it for so long where I was like, this is what I want. Yeah. This is where I want to aim for. I want to, you want to make money. I want to work at the break money. I want to work at the colony. I want to work with celebrity planners. That's, that was my goal always. And from the get, I started with, you know, I would take anything because everybody at the beginning does, but I quickly realized that hey, I have to like say no to some people in order to make room for the luxury client. Right. So you basically, you you started to stand your ground on your worth. Like you're yes. like, I'm worth it in the sense that I know what I need to charge and I'm not going to cheapen myself anymore. Like, because like you said, every, like we all do it at the beginning. We're like, listen, if I can get $300, I'm going to take it how I can get it. Yeah. But then after that, you're just like, wait, I got to pay, like, I got to pay taxes, mm -hmm. I got to pay staff and assistance. Yep. I got to like, and even like the products and stuff, like mm -hmm. the next thing you know, you're like negative, negative, yeah. like you're deducting. So the main thing, I guess, 
what were the what was something that helped you in those like times where you were just like the self doubt creeps in because it's a bit you know when you're first starting a business you start thinking can I do this like did I make the right decision mm -hmm. what were some things that you stuck to like was it a quote was it a mantra was like what what helped you kind of get back into the zone when you started to like have that self doubt. That's a good question. I I mean, there's times where you're like crouched in a corner. I have been there and you're like, what am I doing? And honestly, I think it's for myself. I always have been able to fall real, real low and be able to pick myself up like and do it all over again. And let's do it right this time, you know, and see where it goes. I've I don't know how to put like my finger on that thought that was, oh, I never lost that thought like no matter what you, you, you could make it happen. You resilience. just, so you have that resilience nonstop. Like no matter yes. what, like you're like, I'm going to keep pushing through. Yeah. And let's see, I, I'm not going to just like, after all of this, I'm not just going to sit back and just be like, Oh, I'm just going to go back to work. Absolutely not. I was like, that's not an option. I think that it was, it wasn't an option. It was just keep going. And if it runs into the ground, like just, you know, all right. But halfway there i was like no there's no way i haven't tried exhausted all my options and that was just don't just keep going it's gonna be fine like just keep going and just keeping that thought i mean even now today there's times where i'm confronted at events and and staff doesn't show up or something like that and i'm sitting there like this is if i lose this client you know, that's that's 11, 11, you know, events a year, let's say off of one client. I lose that. That's not it's not just one event. So it's it gets very. Thing. Yeah, it's a big thing. So it's like I've even had times where I've had to put a uniform on and it's like you're going to work right now because mm -hmm. they haven't showed up and keeping that thought of it's all right. We're going to make it happen. That's what has made me pull through so many events, things. I mean, we've had a bar in the wind fall and crack and break and oh continue to have to go on with the event and, and use that same bar however we can to you know keep it going yeah. and thankfully we've always kept a five-star you know review. Impe impeccable service and reviews um up that's till a, this day that's so. amazing though this is Thank a lot you. but also i think a thing is that you're at like all your events like you don't you're not just like oh yeah listen we have an event and you just send someone or something yeah no I show up. I'm there. I have not. I have managers. Like when we have multiple events in a day, and I can't be all at one. I'm there on site though at six, seven a.m. at one event. So then at nine, I'm at the other one. I at least touch everything to be able to. Still up until now, like I've been then able to let go. a difference in a business. Yes, I've been able to let go a little bit, but you know, I have. I'm training now a few people that they have stand by me so they can see exactly what it is. Like I, my the detail is very big for me. So. Um, that's, I touch everything still. And I go to every single event and I'm like very involved. I want it to be <laughs> perfect. And yeah, that's, that's kind of where, why we are, where we are today, I think. So that's yeah. amazing though. Thank like, you. I think that's, that shows a lot, especially the fact that your resilience and also like, you're just like, like you said, the show must go on, like you're dedicated to it. And I think a lot of the times when people go into creative field, it's not like I always, we were talking about it earlier, but it's not all glitz and glam. There's no. a lot of hard work involved. But what makes a difference is the fact that you know this is what's for you. Yes. Like, the, like you want this so bad that like no matter what happens, like if, we're, if this is crumbling down, I'm crumbling with him, building it back up again, mm -hmm. no matter how many times it takes. So it's amazing. So tell okay. me a little bit about like how did Bar Barbies, the name, it's so catchy, by the way. Thank you. And the whole like, 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 you know, the branding of it, like explain us a little bit how you landed on that. Thank you. So that came from, that's a funny story, but I, I always younger. My name is Barbara. So as a kid, I was always like, they would always call me Barbie and you know, my Barbara, yeah, and my cousins and then at school and, and everything. I, I mean, as I can remember as far back as like fourth grade where they're like singing the Barbie song to me and I'm like oh my god and it's funny because like that that has followed me throughout my life because of my name and I was like sitting there after I made the professional bartender card and it said my name on it and I'm sitting there like what is catchy like what could would catch someone's eye like by seeing the logo and then the name once you give them the name like yeah. what is that you know you so. wanted something that could be memorable but also like catchy but not like a super complicated yeah. name. Yeah. And that still had the bar word in it because I know like keywords and all that stuff. Like you have to make sure. So I was like, okay, I need something with bar in it. And I was like, oh, and I, I kind of have 
we do have a standard for what our bartenders, you know, for what they look like and what they are. And everybody takes pride in that. And um, I was like, well, I mean, bar. And then I was like, first it was like, I think it was like Barbies. I don't know what I said, but it ended up bar Barbies and it just flowed so well. And my boyfriend helped me a lot too. He was like, I don't know. Like we came up with like a few different names and then, the what were logo. some of the other names out of curiosity? Um, well, it was like Bar Babes. That was one. Then it was, um, oh my God, what was, this was six years ago. So I'm like trying to think. That was Bar Babes. And then I had one for men where I was like, because I wanted to do like a subcategory of just men. It was like Bar Men. That was so like... <laughs> And so it's like different names that I I wish I would have written them down so I can read them off to you. But I had a few different ones and it narrowed it down to where it was like, okay, my name is Barbara. When somebody shakes your hand and you're able to say, oh, my name is Barbara and the owner operator of Bar Barbies. And then they're just like, oh, your name is Barbara. It kind of like all ties together. And the logo came from I always I wanted something sexy, but not too um like vulgar or anything like yeah. that and you know i was like black and white is very um Mean, clean sleek. yeah and i was like okay and then i always thought of a silhouette i always had in my mind like a silhouette Makes of sense some sort because of the bar barbie bar barbies yeah so i was like oh whatever and then i kind of sent it to a graphic designer and i was like playing with ideas and i told him i was like you know something with glassware a champagne glass or you know maybe her like a silhouette holding onto the glass or you know maybe holding a glass something like that's kind of how it started and then he came up with um the girl sitting in the glass and it was I was like in love with it as soon as I saw it. I asked a few people and I kind of did like a poll and everybody picked it. And you did a poll like on social media? Yeah, I did a poll so on social media. So people could vote. Yes, yeah. oh. people could vote. It's interactive because I was like, what catches people's attention? And then our, our slogan, you know, is um, it's more than just bartending. So people read that and they're like, oh, what is that? And it's yeah. like, well, we do, it's you like know, play on words in yes. a way. So it makes you think of other, you know, yeah. just makes your mind go. And then you want to ask me, well, what is it? Yeah. What is Bar Barbies? Yeah. yeah. It's like we are a full service. We, you know, we have rentals, we have staff and, and all the plethora of things that we're able to provide. So it's kind of a, a nice opener, too. So I was always very. It's perfect for your elevator pitch. Yes, it is. It really, <laughs> it really is. is. Like it's a good opening for sure. Thank you. So okay, so then you found the name, and then from there, it's like, what were some of the hurdles? Like, how did you go out like with staff, and like, how did you know like how many people you needed? And at first, I assume like it was you, and then maybe someone else you would find to help. You. Like, because again, starting a business, like it's not just like you start a business tomorrow and you have ten staff members on roster to pay like <laughs> that's crazy yeah it, it works a little different so tell me a little bit about that it really does um so i was just doing all events by myself it was just me and you know we weren't bringing rentals in or anything like that i wasn't you know bringing anything in but just tools my regular basic tools and um, it was just me doing all of them i was able to at that point and then we started getting requests for a little bit bigger things and um more frequent. And I was also working still. So I was like, um, so you were still working the other job. Yes. And I hadn't, I didn't let, I didn't stop working until the third year. So, so I, how was it like you'd work like a nine to five? And then after that, it's like, no, I, I still worked in the industry, but yeah, basically, but I worked like, yeah, like a certain amount of hours in the week. And then when I had events, my boss, he knew that I was doing this. So he was very, thankfully, Renato's in Palm Beach. They were very um, supportive. supportive and let me kind of do my own schedules, like make my schedules and let them know, like I have events these days, so I can't work. Um, but eventually it started getting to the point where I was like, I can't handle all of it. It was getting too much. And yeah, I had to start like asking for help. I'm like, who? So I would go to different bars and I would, girls would make drinks and they were really good. And I'm like, I'm sure they're going off of um, a menu or like a recipe, but you know, they know what it takes and how to hold a bottle and all of that. Cause all that means a lot in, you know, in this industry. And I just would recruit and I would just go up to them and say, Hey, like I'm doing this. You going out there and being bold. Me. Like, yeah, yeah. Like me asking cold calling, basically a cold, whatever. Cold meeting. Yeah. And just straight up going up to you them. You would go to saying, the bar and then have a drink and they'd be like, wow, that girl's good. Like, yeah. I needed to like, and I still till this day do that. And that's I amazing. Somebody who's like, and I'm like, well, and I don't know. Sometimes people just catch 
they just catch my eye and I'm like, let me go just talk to them and kind of like pitch it. Yeah. And if they're interested, they're going to reach out. If they're not, that's fine. And there's no pressure there. I'm just like, here you go. This is what we're doing. We do private events. If you're interested, you know, please give me a call. Yeah. So that's kind of where I, you know, I would ask my sister to help me. She's in an industry too. I would, you know, bring in family. I was like, I need help moving this. Like, you know, everybody would help me. And now we are, you know, able, I have a full team where, like I said, because of recruiting and we just, from being seen on Instagram, Facebook, online, I've had people reach out and ask like, hey, are you guys hiring? And that was a, a big turn for me too, because they were asking to work. And that was such a great thing. It was such a load off my shoulders. Yeah. And I was able to kind of sit, step back a little bit and kind of do the more manager side of it and event managing versus working the actual bar. And that yeah, opened up the other side to where I was able to like free myself to hire managers and all of that. So and then be proactive. Yeah, you know, on every single element. So when you are, let's say, you know, with Bar Barbies, it's an experience for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen it firsthand. And we'll be sure to insert some photos of the different drinks and Thank stuff, you. so you guys can all see what we're talking about. But with your, like you said, you really pride yourself on not just going to like the store and buying a juice and using it like mm -hmm. some people do. So tell us a bit about your process, like. Like what makes Bar Barbie such a, an exclusive experience? So like I said before, we all of our juices are fresh pressed, all fresh juices, all made in house. We have a commercial kitchen that everything is made in all the garnishes and everything are, you know, when we do dried fruit or flowers or anything like that, that's all made in our kitchen. And, you know, prep chef handles all of that. And we just pick it up, you know, and take it to whatever events that we need to go to. Um, that was a big one for me because it just, it makes you stand out, you know, Absolutely. it's not going to taste the same as what a lime juice that's been sitting on the shelf for God knows how long. Yeah. And a fresh juice really makes a difference on your palate. And it's the whole experience, the aromas, everything, you know, that look at those keywords, palate aroma. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking. <laughs> it's a big deal, really, when it comes to cocktails. And I think my love for craft cocktails and like craft food and, and unique things made that be very important to me as you know it, focusing on that as on the business and um, th i think that's one of the biggest things that makes a difference is the juices and that they're just fresh made that morning you know ready for the whatever events that we have they're not there for more than a day nothing is and you can tell and you can taste it and it's on the presentation too you're able to see it so and tell us a little bit about the fact that so when you started also even now how do you deal with like competition or even like other services like how do you you know always just stay cutting edge which I know because I could see it it's key things like your social media like you're very present on it also like your business your whole caliber it's more than just a drink it's like an experience it's like you're hanging out with the Barbies like mm -hmm. in a way like that's kind of you know mm -hmm. so how, like was it something that just came out organically or you just thought about every single thing as you went um, building your business. I, it's something I thought of, I thought of so, so throughout, you know, I was something that I was very, I always wanted it to be that I wanted yeah. to be known for that. Like, Oh, I, the bar robberies are here, you know, and a thing. And that was at first very promotional doing a whole bunch of promotional events and stuff. And then Barbie and, movie came out yeah. and it just blew up. <laughs> yeah. And that, you know, all, all things of that nature, it was, it was making a name for our, for me, for myself and for my business and then kind of stepping away and focusing not on myself, but like on our staff. And like, this is our team there. They are everything that you, you know, you're imagining them to be. And yeah, it was just throughout and every single event you pick things up that it's like, okay, this can be a little bit better. And like, oh, we need to focus on this. And I'm very pay attention to detail and all the girls know that. So they're very aware of it. So when something, any little things off, they're like, Hey, we need to let you know about this. What do you think? And then, you know, we fix and, and adapt as we go. But it's always been a part of my dream as in everybody knowing like, oh, OK, there's bar barbies are here. It's fine. Like they got it. We don't have to worry about absolutely anything. And that's what it's been up until now. So very good. Yeah, I you. love that. So with luxury events, we're, we're going to go into like the, the, the warm waters. What has been some hardcore luxury events you've done what's what's been one memorable horror luxury event you've done horror like like absolute like nightmare that where you're just like oh my god like something that's just you don't don't say names because we don't yeah, have like, to <laughs> <laughs> but share that like what was it that you're just like whoa <laughs> yeah like well okay so 
the one there's been a couple that this has happened where it was like <laughs> oh god but it's being understaffed for a public event that they estimated a guest count for and it ended up being like triple that how many was like the estimated the estimated was like 50 to 80 and it was like 250 to 3 oh my <laughs> oh my Oh my. And yes. That's like more than triple. And like yes. <laughs> I say triple to be on the nice side, but yeah. And and it was, you know, you have two staff members on for the low number. Because they estimated what 80 people, 40, 80 people. Yeah, 50 to 80 50 at to the 80. most. And it was so many more that it's I mean, at that point, you're going to run out of things. I mean, we calculate every single ounce that's in a bottle. So every ounce of alcohol, every ounce of juice, every slice of the fruit, we know exactly yeah. how much to take to an event for a certain amount of people. And if they're average drinkers and if they're, you know, avid, th we calculate it that way. Now, oh, that's a good point. I didn't even know that you guys did that. Yeah. I, that's so learned. cool. So like if you go to a wedding and at this wedding, they're heavy drinkers. You know to pull out all the liquor. Yeah, and way much more than what it would be for somebody. They're like, oh, average drinker, one drink an hour versus two to three in an hour. So, wow. you know, that's oh, this, something. That's something interesting. <laughs> yes, that's something that we have to use as our calculator. We need, and for glassware, for napkins, for all of those things, is we need to know because if we're running drinks like crazy and you're you're gonna run out of stuff you know because yeah. you're not you don't have like a closet full of alcohol in the back you know it's yeah. whatever we bring in so that was those were nightmares where i've had to like i'm i'm walking around making sure everything's okay where i've had to put on a uniform and like let's go i have to i have to help I'm, and what did you do with that event though like like, did you run out of things? Like, like, how did you? Oh do my god! That? So, did you make stores in the middle of the like oh run? My. You know, uh, run to the store because you're yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. So we, I had to jump. You know, I had to jump behind. I had to start helping. And when I started seeing things, like I'm grabbing bottles, I'm looking at stuff, and I'm like, oh my god, we're not gonna make it. Like we're an hour in, and this is almost oh. gone. Oh. So I'm phone call, and I'm like, guys, right now. I remember I for one of them. It was my sister, one my dad, and you know this is more towards the beginning. And now she's my event manager, one of my event managers. And she, I was like, you know, you you got to go, you got to run, you got to go to the store, just get whatever you need. We need this much, you know. I kind of calculate off the top of my head. This calculator's not there for me to yeah. plug anything in. So off the top of my head, and just yeah, let's and go. At that point, did you decide you're like, okay, I'm only gonna serve two things on the menu because you have to control it too. It's mm -hmm. not like you could just. Hey, what do you want to drink? And then someone says like a Shirley Temple with vodka. And then someone else says an espresso martini because mm -hmm. no, like there's no time for all that. Like, I think at that point, right. Do you, do you set like a controlled menu? For sure. We have to control chaos at that point. And it's <laughs> like, okay, well, you know, and we can't ever say one of our things is we're not, we didn't run out. It's like, give us, you know, just a minute. We're just running to, you know, restock. And as soon as that gets there, then we find that client and it's, you know, being very personable with them and letting them know, you know, straight out and being honest and find that client. And once that's there, here you go, here's your, um, sorry, here's the, you know, your cocktail that you were expecting and however much long it took. But and how did that work with that specific client? Because I see, like, I, I could see a lot of different headaches from that in oh, the yeah. sense of like, even how do you go back to the client and like, the charging aspect because mm -hmm. they said one thing and then now it's another. So mm -hmm. how did you handle that? So um, at that point, that's something that's in our contract that it states that if, if contract always, always <laughs> have a contract always, <laughs> and it's stated there that if it changes, there's certain fees and things that come into play. And at that point, we kind of take the reins. Um, and I just kind of can't do what you've asked me to do, because at this point now it's like you said, controlling chaos and figuring out how we can run smoothly with what we have for now. So yeah, it's been times where the client gets upset and, you know, you have to just explain to them that it's just impossible. And if they really want to still keep this five-star service going, then we need to kind of cut back on certain things or, you know, focus them on the food for some time in order to kind of get ourselves together. But at the end of the day, it's not our fault because we were told one thing and, you know, now we're here. Yeah. So, um, that's in our contract. And, um, there's been, there's been times where I've almost had to leave where they haven't, 
provided us with what they said they were going to provide us with in a sense uh, before we had our liquor license a lot of people we would send give them an alcohol order list and they wouldn't have everything and they would say they would and then i was like we can't and on the contract that states that if that's not there then we can lawfully walk up walk away because i'm not we're not going to look bad because you decided that you just didn't want to go to the store and get limes you know so it's been it's difficult because you have to show face and come and say like hey we're leaving sorry like we can't and it's contract and because it's your business it's my face it's our face at the end of the day and sometimes it's not worth it you know Um, but a lot of times the clients are understanding and they they get it and they're you know sorry and thankful that we're able to even make something happen for them so yeah yeah. absolutely like that's amazing and and also being able to deal with that and then keep a cool calm collected Mm -hmm. in front of people which is like amazing (laughs) because deep down like we're like oh my god God, yeah, what the, melting, what crashing, the, and burning. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Yep. So when it comes to like you mentioned, you focus on luxury events, right? Mm-hmm. So with the luxury events, like, is there a specific planning process, especially with corporate? Like, you know, getting a corporate contract is another thing I want to mention. It's not as easy as people mm-hmm. make it seem as well, <laughs> because it's not just like I open my business tomorrow and I want to go for corporate. Corporate has like they they even have a budget that they mm-hmm. plan like a year to two years in advance. Mm -hmm. So like, how did you like navigate into the corporate world, especially with the bidding process and all of that? So with the corporate world, it was, it was definitely very different, very, very different. Like you said, there's budgets allocated to certain things and they won't budge, you know, they won't go over or under or anything. (laughs) So, you know, obviously they want to stay under, but also being familiar with what that means. I worked with a lot in my coaching group. There was, um, someone who worked for a nonprofit that did the budgets for the nonprofit. And we work with a lot of nonprofits too. And that was getting understanding what they need from us and what we need from them. And so, you know, how we can work together to make it happen. Um, But yeah, the corporate world is very, very different. They are very upfront as to what their budget is. And I think that's just being very transparent. Uh, very, very transparent with the clients and as to where we're at, what our, you know, what our numbers are and, I am more than happy. We're entirely customized, customizable. So I'm more than happy to work with them. Um, but a lot of the times they, once you explain to them and under, and they understand the value and like what this is going to be and what it's going to give their clients or, you know, their corporate family and everything, they are gun ho for it. They're like, I understand. And you know what, let's do it. But it's a lot of, you know, it's explaining to them they don't really know the side of the service side, you know, the service industry. So explaining and being completely transparent with them as to what it is and, you know, timelines and all of that. And as as long as that's there and they trust you, they, it's golden. Yeah. It's golden. They, they go for it. So that's been, and is there a minimum that you, like the event has to be in order for you to leave your house? Oh yeah. So I, (laughs) They're Let's be real. Let's get honest with that. Definitely. Um, we definitely, yeah. My coach was always like, are you going to roll out of bed for 200 bucks? Or what's your, what is, what you is, know, what what is the number? No, you? absolutely. As you a know? business, you always have to think about that. Like yes. what's my minimum that I'm leaving my house for? Exactly. And Especially once you've like, after your first year, it's like, I need to start like being more solid with boundaries. Like, yeah, boundaries for mm-hmm. sure. And making boundaries for yourself and understanding like, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to, you know, like you said, come for free or like yeah. work for free. A lot of places do ask you for that. And it's like, you know, when, when am I, I you can offer free things all the time, but when am I going to make money at the end of the yeah, day? Um, so yeah, definitely minimum. Um, also a minimum of hours that kind of is able to um, funnel that in. And, you know, there's people that are like, oh, can you come for 30 minutes? I'm like, What's your minimum hours? Absolutely not. Um, two to four. Two to four. Two to four. Before it was four strict four hours, no matter what it was for. Um, but with corporate clients, uh, we were able to see they needed a cocktail hour and they just wanted, you know, a mingle. Like two hour open bar. Yeah. Like, so yeah. and it was like, but at the end of the day, it's never two hours. Like you have to add in. Once people drink, they want to keep. Going. Well, that too. Additional it keeps hours the party going. of service. And then what comes behind that? Like setup. All that's included. Like you, we don't come. Yeah, all that's, that's part of the hour. That's such a key thing. The setup and breakdown process. That's all part of our hour. So if you book a two hour event, you know, for two hours, hours. there's four hours because it's an hour for setup, an hour for breakdown or an hour and a half for setup breakdown. It's the same thing. Um, We just kind of play with it like that. That's such a good point. So many people in the industry always forget to charge for their setup 
and breakdown mm-hmm. and mileage or even like yeah. overtime mm-hmm. like, travel fees and tra- yeah. accommodation fees like we've we've been i mean we've done events in the hamptons before and also even in miami like we're based in palm beach so when we're asked to go out there and it's past 11 o'clock i've had to now make a fee and accommodation and on contract stating like if it's after this certain time I'm not going to have my staff driving at this time of night. They just work six hours and then you expect them to drive back home an hour and a half. No, they, they need, you know, they need their to stay somewhere and that needs to be added. And if they don't want to go for it, I mean, then you, there's another company over there that you can look for, but if you want us there, this is what it is. I can't. Yeah. And I was going to say, especially in Miami that you have to pay for parking and and like the, all those places, like a lot of the high rises, like they have certain kind of clearances of Mm -hmm. like, you have to park flat fee for the day, like a hundred dollars. That's something you have to allocate also within the contract, because if not, then you're just not going to do it for free. Like, in the gas that took to get there from Palm Beach. Oh my God. Yeah. And it's funny that you say that because a lot of people don't even think about these things and they have no idea. And they're like, what are these fees? And I'm like, I'm not sure if you understand how, you know, (laughs) business works. But yeah, like the parking, the, the gas, like, and not to mention also the fact that they like the thing about Miami that because I lived there for so long. It's like even Target, right? Which is um, in Midtown. You can park in the parking garage for an hour and it's free. But after every other hour, it's $15. Oh my God. So yeah. guess what? For a girl who loves to shop at Target, I am I literally was set a timer because oh I didn't want to end up paying. And then one day I like, I didn't know I was like new to Miami and I went there and I paid like $60 for parking. I was so pissed. Right. And I was a college student. So I was like, yeah. wow, how are you going to take from me? Like, <laughs> I'm sure you get here to study. <laughs> but yeah, that's something you have to think mm-hmm. about. Also for your staff, like if you're, you know, like what if they need a big team? Like, do they even all fit in the vehicle? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so it's something very important. It is. It's very important. Point. So very good point. Yes. And, and I hope that as this industry grows, because our industry is very small, a lot of people are like, oh, it's just a bartender. Like, what do you mean? It's not. Just you know, and it's not. There's so much that comes with it. Um, there are times where you just need a bartender and that's fine. But a lot of the times they see quickly that that's not all they need. And um, as our industry grows, I hope that people get more familiar with that. And I don't have to explain it as much as I do now, but I'm more than happy to. Like I said, I'm very transparent with my clients and let them know, like, we have to be realistic here. Hey, event designer, to you listening or watching, have you ever wanted to find the latest products to have in inventory? Well, look no further. Event Decor Direct is your one-stop shop to get all the material you need from fabric to linens to ceiling drape, hardware, and so much more. All you have to use is a special discount code, IWOULDUNCUT11, to get 11% off your purchase. So make sure to use that code. And thank you so much to Event Decor Direct. So in the bar industry, what trends do you see happening in 2024? So there's a lot of interactive. So um, meaning we have like an aroma bubble gun that it will be. What? Yeah. So there, (laughs) I wish I would have brought it to show you. So um, it goes over the top of the glass. Uh, You kind of, it's a gun. It looks like a gun. And uh, you put the bubble on top and it's filled with aroma. So it could be, you know, basil. So make it smell pretty. Yeah. So when the guest pops the bubble, they get the aroma and that affects their taste buds. You know, it it all comes together, ties together. And a lot of um, cocktail, that's part of like the cocktail trends, a big one. Also, um, different ice, like ice cubes, flowers and ice cubes, um, a lot of florals. Um, but the more interactive, so smoky cocktails, um, old fashions are coming back. It's a big one. Negronis, all the classic cocktails are kind of making a stand again. Espresso martinis. That's a big one. Um, yeah, those are all the trends that are for 2024. I know that for sure. So (laughs) you're like, and that's on everything. Literally. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, great. So I love that. So so those are some of the trends that we're going to see for 2024. Mm -hmm. And of course, with the trends, which we were talking a little bit earlier, you know, clients are more demanding now, thanks to Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and TikTok. So when someone sends you a photo, what is your like design process? So I send you a photo and I say, I want this little like cocktail with the ornament mm-hmm. drink, you know, which I'm talking about. Yeah, the-, the bubbles we did that yeah. last year for <laughs> Alice and Olivia, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so that like how, what is your so from there you get the photo what's your prepping process like you're like okay we could do it but what's the next steps like do you like find the right like 
glass, do you know, start creating the like ingredient list, mm -hmm. finding the products, like what? So first off is the first thing I do is I make sure that we can get our hands on the product because after 2020, we all had to deal with, you know, the, um, inventory being low on things. And so the first thing before I promise anything, I'm always like, I need a, at least a 48 hour turnaround to make sure that I can make this happen for you. You make sure you're able to secure the product. Yes. Once I know that we can do it, no problem. Then after that, it's um, what colors, you know, we kind of focus on the theme and uh, what they're, if they're wanting exactly what the picture shows or, you know, kind of more designing as in, oh, we could do this. We could put um, your logo on it. We can add more things to it to kind of personalize it to the brand or so um, personalized drinks are even able to add like a nice like, you know, how they add the name yep. or something like mm -hmm. we can even customize bars, um, all of that. We put their logos on our branding, full service and everything. full service to do everything. Um, so, yeah, we kind of present. So I kind of throw ideas, too, as to where they're going, just because I do my own research on what's trending and what. So how do you do that? Like, do you forth. show them like a mood board, like. The theme and concept. How do you do that? So they present me with their mood board and what the colors are. And then I come back with, okay, this is what we can do. And I make our own board and kind of show them like, this is what we can do. This is the glasses you would need. And this is where we would get them from and kind of pull it all together in real life versus they kind of have it in like this fantasy where it's just like a picture and they're like fantasy world. This? Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, OK, well, this is real life and this is what's available and this is what we can make happen. And then, you know, we go from there customizing and and everything else. So. OK, I like that. So anything she can get it done. Yes. So make anything. sure you hire hire her for, her, you know, your next event, because I know for when I decide to go walk down the aisle again, maybe. It will Woo. definitely be Barbara's company who will be the call. Oh, make. thank you. I'm excited. So now we're going to do the hot round. Ooh, okay. Where you actually pick out a question and you have to answer it. And it's at random. So you just have to answer it as uncut as possible. So okay, great. Let's pick it out. <laughs> okay, you mixed it in. Okay. What do I have to read it? Yes. Please. Okay. I'm sorry. Excuse me again. What's the most unexpected or bizarre event theme or request you've ever received from a client? Hmm. Okay. This one. It was a a carnival circus theme. That's what they told us. And when we arrived, it was erotic carnival theme. So it was very much like different. Fifty Shades of Grey. Like. Yeah, kind of. I mean, strippers. Um, oh, so like, like full. So, so carnival festival X rated. Yeah, like um, lifestyle, that lifestyle, all of that. And we were like, oh, we didn't know there was naked people walking around all yeah. over the place, you know, because they, they can only tell you a theme and then you kind of go off what you think, well, you it, think is. it is. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, we were open the door and I was like, oh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing today. So, yeah. And then having to talk to staff and make sure they're OK, because some, you know, just respectful of staff. But that was a bizarre one where we walked in and that there was like bizarre. People what would you have up. done if a, if like some of your staff said, no, I cannot, I cannot be you. <laughs> Well, then I would, have, <laughs> I would have had to, you know, um, talk to the client and say that, you know, they could have told us that very specific as yeah. to what it was and that, you know, just to give us some space to try and find someone else to come in or um, we'll run with what we have and, you know, be more respectful. I would never make a staff member like stay. Uncomfortable. Yeah, but um, I would just use them behind the scenes in a sense. So where they're not there in front and they could just, you know, kind of help them behind, back of the house in a sense. Like yeah. That. Okay. Yep. Very good. You did good on your first round. Thank the you. hot question. Second question. Okay. Wait, did you put the other one back? It's right here. No, it's right here. Sorry. Let me pick it again. <laughs> What's the most significant lesson or piece of advice you've received in your personal life that has had a lasting impact on you? Ooh, that's a good one. That is. Finances. How do I even put that into? Uh, <laughs> How do you put that into words? <laughs> yeah, into advice. Um, just getting knocked it, not, like it being knocked into my head that finances and knowing your profits and loss and knowing your numbers and percentages is the key to a successful business. And without that, your business will run into the ground. And 
keeping that in mind every single day, checking numbers and all of that has made a tremendous difference in my business life and my personal life um, all around because I didn't come from a, you know, uh, silver spoon and fork. So I had to learn my way through it. Hustled and you made your own done. And pioneered my way through and learning that was a big part of it. And that's that advice there was so key, which I didn't listen to it at first. But quickly after the second, third year, I was like, okay, this is real and I have to keep it. So now it's checking numbers every day, um, weekly, you know, checking your profits and loss and monthly, quarterly, annually and doing the whole thing. So that's a big one. No, I love that. And also kudos to you because it is amazing. You have now been in business, what, six years? Yep. And I only see it growing bigger and bigger. Thank you. Because again, the fact that, like you said, you started this with an idea and you went for it, which is such a, like, it's so like, I can't even to words because you took a risk. Everything in life, I always say the risk is worth it, mm-hmm. especially at the end with the reward. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't go after that dream or that, you know, goal you have, then you'll never know if it would have worked out, right? Yep. Especially like you said, you start, you have that nine to five and then you're just like, I need to do my own thing. Mm-hmm. Like I can't work for someone else my whole life. Yep. This is not it for me. Yeah. And I was, I didn't know. It was like, I knew I wanted to start a business. I knew business and entrepreneur was my, I'm very visionary. That's my like forte. Yeah. And I didn't know where to put that and where to go with it. And as soon as it, it hit me, I was like, oh yeah, let's go. So yeah. Right. Amazing. Thank you. So before we end the episode, I want you to tell everyone how important it has been and the process it's been for you building relationships with vendors and getting to know other people in the industry that, you know, in this industry, once you have one friend, it's like you learn to be in that circle of friends that is just gets smaller and smaller. And you're just like, everyone knows everyone in the industry. Yes. <laughs> So networking is huge. I try and go, I mean, most of the time and everybody who's in the industry locally will We even met networking. Yeah, exactly. Event. Like the, 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 the proof is in the pudding. We met at a networking yes, event. Yes, I was about to say, you of all people <laughs> were one of the people that we met. And, you know, you never know who you're going to meet at these things, whether it's an industry person in the industry or even, you know, non-industry networking events. There's, you never know who somebody knows or what they're in need of and how you can help them in a way. And that's... That I preach about networking events to everyone that is even thinking of starting a business or any business, any industry at all. There is nothing like a warm handshake and a smile. When you know people, well, a common thing in business is people don't buy from who, what I think it's people buy from who they know. So they, you know, it's, it's, very personable when you meet somebody you shake their hand and they're like oh that's who that is and they see your face and they feel you know your trend that you're transparent that you're there that you're a familiar it, that, yeah, person that they're able that you to keep showing up and that you're not too good to like show up to a networking event and shake some you're hands supporting someone else's event as mm-hmm. well and, and shaking hands and saying hello that goes a long way longer than a lot of people think and like most of my big clients that i've gone is because of cold emails and cold calls and showing up in their office with a cup of coffee and donuts and saying like i would love to work with you i see your work and it's beautiful wait repeat that again So a lot of my big clients I've gotten is from cold calling, cold emails and showing up to their office with coffee, a box of donuts and flowers and whatever and telling them that their work is beautiful and that I would love to work with them one day. And solely just that. I don't even need You're anything from you. The I ice. just want you to know that what you do is great and I would love to be, you know, work alongside you. And it's genuine, you know, and you feel it's genuine and you you're it's easier to work with somebody that you feel that with for sure and i think that networking events weekly if you can monthly for sure and throughout the year always you know go to your um mpis and your anything in the industry that you're in and you know show face because they you know, know. yeah you never know who you're gonna meet I always say that it's like one contact to make a difference Mm -hmm. in your process of even meeting more individuals. Yep. So to end it, where can people find you? So make sure to say your Instagram handle, the Facebook or website. So that way 
the ones that are listening and are watching can make sure to follow the wonderful Barbara. Thank you. So um, at Bar Barbies on Instagram and Facebook, um, like you hear it, and um, our website at barbarbies.com. Okay, great. So Barbara, any closing quote or advice to anyone who is wanting to start a business? Um, yeah, just don't give up. Keep going. It's going to be fine. And even if it's not, you gained um, something under your belt and experience and you can apply it to any other field or anything else um, that you're going to do in your life. It really helps in your personal life, too. So just keep going and don't ever give up. And yeah, I hope you make it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barbara, for being today's podcast guest. You guys, again, round of applause. Oh, thank Girl, you. thank you for being here. I appreciate you taking the time. And make sure to follow us, like, subscribe, and I'll see you at the next podcast episode.